Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Coffee and a Cruise. Uh, if you watched my last video on the review of this car, uh, today we're in the 2021 Lexus ES350. Okay, uh, so you know I've had this car for quite a long time, hence the dirt all over it. Uh, I've been ripping around in it, really sort of enjoying the vehicle. Um, today we're gonna go for a little cruise and uh, and see what we think about it. Okay, so let's let's give her a go. Back and out. All right, so here we go. First thing I notice, uh, and just you know, speaking with a lot of Lexus owners, and then now you know, feeling the car for myself, is that Lexus is known for their quality of steering. So you know, not only the chunkiness of the steering wheel, but just that smooth sort of very direct feeling. You know, when I when I move the steering wheel, I get instant sort of feedback. I get a real good sort of feel with the with the road. Every little sort of turn of the wheel gives me that instant feedback with the vehicle. So a really, really big selling point if you're in the market for a Lexus or in the market for any sort of, you know, high quality sort of steering vehicle, um, I would say Lexus is, is kind of your, should be your go-to. Uh, just, just feels really, really nice right off the bat. Feels very comfortable, luxurious, uh, and just smooth, right? Uh, obviously being a 2021 vehicle, uh, I think you know all car makers now have sort of upped their game, um, but just the, this is ver a very sort of nice place to be. Um, on you know, I want to say first impressions, but I've been in this vehicle for for quite a long time and definitely feel comfortable in here now. Um, another thing that I really really enjoy about Lexus and more so in the in the newer models um, is the displays. So just taking a look here. We're not going to compare it to an F Sport. Obviously, an F Sport is going to have you know a little bit more performance, a little bit longer sort of flat screens. Um, but this one is amazing. Like, take a look at this. This is at least sort of I would say 12 inches long. It's got all the tech. Sort of if you look down here, everything is is you know is worked through this little sort of you know dial here that gives you nice haptic feedback when it's haptic feedback every time i move it it's giving me a little sort of sensor a sensation that tells me that i've made a i've made a move and it's sort of registered the move very quick and easy to use which i really really like right i don't need to take my my eyes off the off the road for too long okay so that's a huge huge point really really enjoy that good uh, sort of technology good software and then what I really like, a nice little styling cue, is this beautiful Lexus clock that's kind of worked into the display. And this is actually the first time I've ever seen this. I used to have an Infinity that had a beautiful clock, but just sitting kind of almost ugly on the on the dashboard. This one is baked, sort of, I don't say baked, but like kind of built very seamlessly into the, into the technology. I really, really like that. Uh, so coming back to the sort of display that the, the driver is seeing here in front of me, again, another digital display, everything is digital. The, the, you know, the speed, the, um, you know, the, the trip meter, everything is showing me um, a nice digital readout. The colors are nice and crisp. Everything is happening nice and quickly. Um, so yeah, I would, I would give this sort of a nine out of 10 for overall sort of technology and, uh, just, just usability and, and functionality. Um, so just getting back to the car again, we're sitting in a, a base ES 350. Um, this one's about 3,900 pounds, um, 400, excuse me, 302 horsepower. I mean, I get too ahead of myself there. 302 horsepower, um, a little less on torque. I think it's 250, 275. I'll have the exact number up on the screen there. Uh, from a, uh, excuse me, 3.5 liter V6 engine. Uh, and so in saying that, you know, great engine, you know, it, it, it's got plenty sort of power plenty sort of pulling power doesn't feel like it's lacking for power when I want if you take a look at the the the, um, the road here we'll come around this bend and we'll just give it our little little push here again we're using that beautiful steering as I come around okay let's hold off on the on the the pull because we're coming up to a red light um, but again we're we buy this car because we want something luxurious right we want a you know a comfortable a comfortable sort of luxury sports car. Um, and so this one, you know, kind of ticks all those boxes for me, right? It's luxurious, 
It's, you know, it's got all the tech in it. Um, I get that nice quietness of the, of the cockpit, right? It doesn't really feel heavy. I think a lot of times when you get into these luxurious sports cars, they compromise on, on you know, it's uh, the luxury is there, the tech is there, the leathers are all there, it's beautiful, but the weight of the car, you can really feel it. Uh, and this one doesn't actually feel that heavy. It actually feels pretty nimble, all things considered. Um, obviously, if you want something a little lighter, a little bit sportier, a little smaller, you'd go IS 350 or IS you know, I think even a 550 or, or potentially putting an F badge on it will take you to that next sort of level of performance. If you want something in the next class up, you would go GS, which is even more luxury. Um, but again, you're gonna sort of, you're gonna miss out uh, in terms of like the, the, the heaviness of the car is gonna be there. So the agility, the nimbleness is not gonna be quite on par. So I think this, the ES, being kind of the soft spot or the you know the, the good spot to be where it encompasses you know the sportiness and the luxuriness um, you know that you get in the ES and the IS which is why I kind of like this one uh, so just coming around here let's get on the front row let's give it a, a good little pull here coming around a little bridge around and here we go we're at a stop sign let's get our little little zero to 60 here okay from a dig and here we go So not a lot of traction going on. I think I have traction control on, a lot of wheel spin, uh, but nice sound of the engine. I really, really like that. I think if I, um, you know, sort of got it going from a little bit of speed instead of just from a dig, it uh, it probably would have hooked up a little bit, a little bit better. So let's just try that now. Here we go. We're about 30 miles per hour, and then we're gonna put it down. Okay, and that was much more seamless, just kind of immediate power. Um, so. That being said, you know, you're on a freeway or you know, you're in and out of, of traffic and you want to kind of get in a little little spot ahead, this has got the power to kind of get you there. Just boom. And then you're kind of where you need to go. So, you know, not not mind-boggling speed, but again, we talk about just being able to tick the box. It's got enough speed to kind of get you where you need to go uh, and get you in and out of the, the corners. So I really, really like it. One thing I'm really, really noticing here is that it's got a few modes, but not all, not your typical sort of driving modes where it's either, you know, on the on the display here or on the steering wheel as Mercedes does. But this this one, Lexus does in a kind of cool way. It's a little sort of toggle here. So you just flick it up, boom, you're in sport mode. Flip it back, you go back to normal mode, or if you want to be energy sort of uh, conservant, if you want to, you know, your fuel economy to be a little bit more um, intelligent, you just flick it down and then you're in your eco mode. So personally, if you guys watch this channel, you know me, I'm always in sport or sport plus or race if it's offered, and we just stay in there. Okay, obviously the wife doesn't like the, the gasoline prices and uh, how much fuel I use, but hey, that's what you gotta do. Um, so just giving it a little bit of thought uh, in terms of like competition, I'd say, you know, Mercedes C300, potentially at a base level E-Class, E350, uh, in terms of luxury, uh, the C-Class being a little bit smaller, so maybe potentially more of an E-Class. Uh, I'd say the Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia, right? There's a bunch of different ranges there. BMW, mm, I'd say maybe four series, right? The, the or even the three series sedans um, would be in sort of competition. And all these cars offer sort of different things, but coming in at a much higher price point. I think for value, um, this is probably the way to go because it's, you know, technology, it actually is better than, than BMW. Maybe not quite as good as the new Mercedes. I would say on par, if, if not maybe just lacking, just behind. Uh, but done in a different way. Um, and then Alfa Romeo, this is this is way better than Alfa Romeo. So getting a lot of what these German counterparts offer, but for a little bit cheaper, right? So, hey, it's a no brainer. If you can get over the badging, you know, and this is, it's a great badge anyways. Um, I think this is actually a really, really good buy. So let's just test out the brakes a little bit. So going up, you know, going, getting our, our speed up pretty good here. And then let's see how we do here, getting on the brakes really hard, right? Again, we talk about it not being a super heavy vehicle, came down to speed nice and nice and easily, you know, didn't lose traction, didn't break traction at all. So I like that. Uh, obviously this car is doesn't, doesn't offer, you know, carbon ceramics, it's just your regular steel brakes. Um, the F-Pace, 
uh, badging might offer a little bit more in terms of carbon ceramics. I know the other the other competitors and different German brands always offer that like really expensive carbon ceramic sort of option. Um, but in my opinion, if you're not if you're not racing this vehicle, if you're not taking to the track, which which you're not, you're not buying this car for for track uh, purposes. You, the steel brakes are are plenty good. They're they're all you really need. Um, the ceramic brakes, they need to get heat into them anyways. You need to be ripping around a racetrack to really sort of get the full sort of experience of them. And you know, this car again, we're not, we're not using it for that. Um, so just kind of getting a little bit of the feel of the car, moving it side to side, you know, not a ton of body roll. Again, this goes back to the, the steering of the vehicle, right? It really does sort of handle itself nicely. Um, just doing a little, little U-turn here got all the sensors and everything right I'm trying to back up here and there's some stupid Honda Accord going past me there with you know not wanting to let me go back and it's letting me know that his average vehicle is behind me <laughs> sorry that's not called for uh, but yeah it's got all the creature comforts it's got your lane keep assist you know, it's got, uh, you know, your, your parking, uh, you know, sensors, your, um, you know, your parking assist, all the things that you want in your luxury vehicle. I always go back to this being a luxury vehicle. It's not a performance vehicle, it's a luxury vehicle. So for me, you know, again, just, just not to miss all this stuff, you know, we're looking at all the materials in here. Nice, 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 solid, sort of soft touch leathers, right? We got wood grain on the side here. You got a couple other vents there nice high quality sort of um, door handles right in brushed aluminum right just just high quality sort of materials all throughout right so when you're sitting in this vehicle as an owner you look around and it just it just gives you that nice feeling that you're in something really really special so for me this is a great vehicle um, coming in around forty thousand dollars at at the base level probably working your way all the way up to 45 fifty thousand if you want to really option it out with you know with f f badging and stuff like that um to you know to put maybe a little bit more horsepower a little bit more torque a little bit of you know more sort of flat screen just a few little odds and ends but in my opinion i mean being in this sort of segment i don't think you necessarily need the f badging um that's that's you know it's an option it'll take you to the sort of next level um but this is you know a great vehicle um you know i want to i want to say a big thank you to lexus for letting me sort of have a little hoot in this and uh give you my opinions um definitely you know if you're in if you're in the market for uh you know a, a a comfortable sort of luxury vehicle and don't want german prices but still want to get everything that you know that german automobiles sort of offer i would definitely have a have a look at the new 2021 uh lexus es 350 because in my opinion it's it's certainly a buy i've really enjoyed my time with this vehicle so again thanks for watching the the video guys hopefully you uh you got something out of it if you enjoyed this vehicle and uh in this this video and you want to see more stuff coming uh, i urge you to subscribe to the channel and uh follow along uh because i got a lot more sort of stuff coming all right it's an exciting time for the youtube uh sharp moves channel okay see you in the next video guys all right bye Oh, 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 oh,